All right, so here we have the differential equation, dy dx equals 2y over 2x plus 1 with the initial condition, y of 0 equals e for x is more than negative 1 half. Okay, so let's go ahead, let's, let's, let's integrate this. So we're going to bring the y terms to the left and the x terms to the right. So what we're going to have is the integral of... 1 over 2y dy is equal to the integral of 1 over 2x plus 1 dx. And um, on the right side, or on the left, we can just factor out that, that 1 half. Make it easy, get 1 half integral of 1 over y dy. On the right side, um, we do substitution. I'm going to make u the 2x plus 1. du will then be 2dx. We just have a dx, so we're going to have 1 half du equals dx. And so what we're going to have here is 1 half times 1 over u du on the right side here. And so what's going to happen is 1 half is going to have to cancel out. I don't have to worry about them. And let's go ahead and let's integrate this now. The integral of one over y is just the natural log of the absolute value of y. Remember, this is u to the negative one. So we're gonna use we're gonna use um the oh no, this is just uh, whoops, u to the negative one. So again, this is the same thing as here. For some reason I was gonna use the power rule, but this is just now gonna be the natural log of the absolute value of u. Plus our constants. Not forget that. Now let's resubstitute that u back in here. Natural log of y is equal to the natural log of 2x plus 1 plus c. And then from here, we can raise, we can have e raised to this will equal y. y will equal e raised to the natural log of. 2x plus 1 plus c. And we're told that x will be greater than negative 1 half, so we don't have to worry about that absolute value symbol anymore. And let's have to rewrite this as y equals e to the um, natural log of 2x plus 1 times e to the c. Using the you know using the um, exponent property, and we like to do that because this e to the c is just a constant coefficient. E is a number and c is just some number, so we we're just going to make that a. So we can actually rewrite this now as y equals a times e to the natural log of two x plus one. And we have y equals a. Remember the number your logarithmic properties. E raised to the natural log of itself just becomes whatever it's taking the natural log of. So this just becomes 2x plus 1. So it's just y equals a times 2x plus 1. Now we solve for a because we're given the initial condition that y of 0 equals e. So then we're going to have e is equal to a times two times zero. So that two times zero is just gonna be, it can't go away. I mean, I'll write it again, but it's gonna go away plus one. And we can see that a is just gonna be one. Oh no, so that not a, a will just be e, not one. So e will, a will just be e. Let me, let me go up here so we don't have to scoot back. So then if a is, so if I, a is e, then we'll have y equals e times 2x plus 1. And we'll see if we have anything in this form, which I believe we do. Well, this is the same as, this, is, this will be the same as b, y equals 2ex plus e. The answer is b. <clears throat> All right, 23, oh, okay, here we got a, that cross section.
integration from probably in the, the last chapter you can usually cover in calculus one. Okay, so we have the region enclosed by the graphs of y equals x squared and y equals 2x as the base of a solid. And for the solid, each cross section perpendicular to the y axis is a rectangle whose height is three times its base in the xy plane, which is the following expression gives the volume of the solid. Okay, let's draw a sketch of what this would look like as best as I can, at least, to the xy plane. The y equals 2x. y equals x squared. So we have, so we have, this is what, this is our, um, this is our trapped region here. Now it's saying that each cross section is perpendicular to the y axis. So we're looking at cross sections like this essentially. Running so running basically horizontally, and if you're looking at the the plane like this, so cross sections like that. Now what that means is that we're going to integrate with respect to y. So we're integrating from respect to y, and um, that means we're going to have to find the lower bounds. The lower bounds we know these lines are going to intersect at zero zero. And these lines will enter y 2x equals x squared. This is going to intersect at 2, 4. So we're going to integrate from 0 to 4 in terms of y. So we're going to integrate 0 to 4 in terms of y. And since we're integrating with respect to y, we need to write these equations as functions of y. So this, instead of being y equals 2x, we're going to solve for x, and it'll be x equals 1 half y. And for this one, instead of y equals x squared, you're solving for x. So you're going to have x equals the square root of y. Let me go and let me actually let me let me move this let me move this integral down here a little out of the way for now. This one will be x equals the square root of y. So now we have to think about what what is going on here. Like when it says the rectangle whose height is three times its base in the xy plane. So um, from here to here, that'll be the base. So let's draw like um, what a rectangle will look like. So what these rectangles will look like. This is the base so from here to here. This is the height is the height is going to be you can't it's going to be the uh, it's going to be popping out in the z direction. Um, I mean I can't can't really draw it that well, but you visualize like you know this sort of thing this sort of thing happening if you can. So the height will be three times the base. Now we have to figure out an equation for the base, and then we can write an equation for the height. So the base, remember, is going to be the distance from this function to this function. So if you're looking at it like this, let's turn it out like this. The top minus the bottom, the top function. Let's see if I have some. You have the pink function versus the. Um, a blue will be your, I don't know if that's blue, versus the inside one. That's not very good. But you want this minus this to get the base, because that will give you this length here. So the outside is the, is the parabola, or the, 
y equals x squared or were we found to be that x equals the square root of y? So we're gonna have that base will be the square root of y minus this line, minus this bottom part, which in terms of y will be minus one half y. That'll be the base. And then the height is three times the base. So the height will be just three times this value, three times the square root of y minus one half y. The base height. And we know that the area, the area of a rectangle is just the base times the height, base times height, b times h. So we did b times h, integrating from zero to four. dy. Now it's not quite given in that form, so let's 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 break it down a little bit more. So that we're integrating from zero to four. The base will be square root of y minus one half y. Height three times the square root of y. minus one half y dy. And it looks like we have a three gonna be factored out. So the right is that we can take out that three, fact three times this integral. And you're gonna see it's just gonna be the square root of y minus one half y squared to the times itself dy. And that'll be, and our answer will be a. Twenty-four. The average value of a continuous function f on the interval negative two to four is twelve. What is the integral from negative two of one eighth of x? So that's that's a that's your hint right there. This is basically one eighth times ne the integral from negative two to four of f of x. So the key here is to figure out what proportion of this. That this, uh, what proportion this function is, or this integral is of this one. Um, so if we're saying average value, remember the average value is one over B minus A from, from A to B, you know, of F of X DX. So let's figure out what that would be for this function. If we're going from negative two to four, we're gonna have one over negative two minus four, negative two, or four minus, sorry, four minus negative two, so either one, four minus negative two, but that's your B. It doesn't actually matter, I guess, the distance, they're still six away. So one six times integral from negative two to four, f of x dx and we're told that this is equal to 12 this whole thing is equal to 12 so if this whole thing is equal to 12 multiplying by by 1 multiplying by 6 to cancel out this 1 6 is using algebra that means the integral from negative 2 to 4 f of x dx, again, multiplying both sides by six, we'll use see six times 12 will be 72. So we know the integral of f of x from negative two to four is 72. So this will just be one eighth times 72. Because we have our integral right there. Now it'll just be nine. So the answer will be C.